No one asked for this, but The Hunger Games is one of my all-time favorite books, so I had to make a video about it. Which is your all-time favorite book? And do you want me to butcher it with a video? So let's begin. The Hunger Games. This time I'm not gonna have a problem with the names. Finally! Katniss Everdeen wakes up on the reaping day, finding her mother and Prim still snoozing away. Her mom, bless her heart, couldn't handle life after Katniss's dad met his fate with a mine explosion. So Katniss had to take charge in providing food to the table, becoming District 12 finest archer. Out in the woods with Gale, they're plotting world domination, well, district domination, and gossip about the capital's jiggery pokery. After nabbing their game, they hustle over to the hop, where Katniss expertly negotiates the best deals. Then they are off to hook up Mayor under... with strawberries. At the mayor's house, Match opens the door. That's the mayor's daughter. Katniss and Match understand each other despite not talking much. Match is the only girl Katniss can call a friend. Katniss then returns home to prepare for the reaping and tries to cheer up Prim. The night at the reaping was like watching a history lesson. The mayor yak about Panem rising from the ashes of North America's governments. And Hamish hey Abernathy, the district's golden boy, ends up face first in his own vomit. Then comes the main event. Effie Trinket with her capital fashion and flair grabbing names left and right. And boom, Prim's name gets caught. Katniss's face? Let's not talk about that. She volunteers to take Prim's place. Next up is our real golden boy in shining flower, Peter Melark, who once saved Katniss from starvation with a loaf of bread that could be used as a doorstep. Now he's standing there next to her and Katniss is freaking out because she owes him more than she can count. They get pulled off the stage, but hey, visitors are allowed. Mom and Prim show up. Katniss begs her mom not to bail like last time. Peter's dad, the baker, pledges to keep Prim fed while Madge trusts her mocking J-pin at Katniss like a crystal manifesting winning. Gale tries to drop a bombshell, remember I, but Capitol guards shoot him down. Fast forward to the train ride to Capitol City. Effie is impressed by their manners, but Katniss gets mad about her comment and decides to eat like a beast. They manage to get Hamish on board to play sponsor matchmaker. At the opening ceremonies, enter Cena, the fashion maestro with a heart of gold and not the heart of the Capitol. With the help of Peter's stylist Porsche, they turn them into burnt bacons of style with black suits and synthetic flames. They hold hands and suddenly everyone's talking about District 12 bacon tribute show. The next day, Katniss and Peter join group training where the career tributes from well districts who've been training for the game since they could walk show off their skills like they're at the Capitals Got Talent. They also train with Hamish and Effie until it's time for the game maker's assessment. Katniss is called last of course. When she finally struts in, she sees the game makers are mostly tipsy and more interested in their lunch than her performance. Her first attempt with the bow is a flop because the strings stiffer than my neck. After a quick adjustment, she nails every target. The game makers still snoozing away. In a move of sheer frustration and a touch of drama, she shoots an apple right out of the roasted pig on their table. That gets their attention. Later, she finds out she scored an 11 out of 12, the highest among the tributes. You go, girl! Before the interviews, she asks about training with Hamish and Peter again, and is surprised to learn Peter decided to train solo. <sighs> Guess the bacon partnership has some things to work out. The next day, it's interview time with Caesar Flickerman. Cena outdoes himself, dressing Katniss in a stunning jewel dress, making her the literal girl on fire again. During Peter's interview, he drops a bombshell by professing his love for Katniss to the entire nation of Panem. Katniss's response? A solid punch, romantic, right? Unable to sleep before the games, Katniss heads to the roof for some fresh air and mental prep. Or to punch Peter again, there she finds Peter, probably nursing his bruised ego. They discuss the games with Katniss hoping for trees that could provide cover. Peter, on the other hand, worries about staying true to himself and not turning into a capital-made monster. I think it's time for you to subscribe and maybe like the video, please? When the games begin, Katniss is lifted into the arena and runs away as Hamish advised. She grabs a backpack during a tussle with the boy, who is then conveniently stabbed by Quove. Katniss avoids Quove's knife by blocking it with her backpack, earning a knife and some serious bragging rights. She hikes all day and camps out, hoping her nap in a tree strategy will catch on. After dark, a nearby fire attracts the career tributes – Glimmer, Marvel, Kato, Quove and the girl from District 4. They kill the camper. To Katniss's shock, Peter is among them, looking like he's joined the wrong social club. The next day, Katniss searches for water, begging Hamish for help. Getting no response, she takes it as a cosmic hint and finally finds a steam. She is awakened by a game maker created fire and while escaping gets hit by a fireball, adding roasted to her list of survival skills. Katniss sleeps in a tree and wakes to the sound of the career pack. Kato attempts to climb after her but fails miserably, while Glimmer's arrows miss her. The careers too heavy to climb. Decides to wait her out on Peter's suggestion. Yo. 
Kemich sends Katniss burn cream via silver parachute, which she uses. Rue silently points out the tracker jacker nest above Katniss. Katniss cuts it down and the tracker jackers attack the careers, who run around like dancing for rain, killing Glimmer and the girl from District 4. Katniss grabs Glimmer's bow and arrows, but Peter sees her. He lets her escape, winning the nicest competitor award and earning Ketu's undying rage. Katniss and the careers suffer tracker jacker stings and take days to recover. When Katniss wakes from the tracker jacker hallucinations, she teams up with Rue, who reminds her of Prim. They become the ultimate duo, finding food and protecting each other. Realizing the careers rely on their food supplies, they hatch a plan. Rue lights decoy fires, channeling her inner mischievous side, while Katniss sneaks up to the cornucopia. Katniss discovers the supplies are booby-trapped with reactivated landmines, courtesy of District 3's resident tech geek. She watches as Foxface jumps through the mines like it's a deadly jumping game, stealing supplies without a hitch. Inspired, Katniss shoots a bag of apples, triggering the mines in a spectacular explosion that destroys nearly everything, but this leaves her left ear ringing. Listening for Rue, Katniss hears their secret four-note melody echoing by Mockingjays, only to be shattered by Rue's screams. She rushes to find Rue just as another tribute taps her with despair. Channeling her inner Avenger, Katniss kills the tribute. As Rue dies, Katniss tenderly covers her body with flowers, singing to her. A parachute from District 11 floats down to Katniss, bringing her bread, likely meant for Rue, now a token of their alliance. This significant gesture marks the first gift to a tribute from another district. Later, Claudius Temple Smith's voice booms out announcing the two tributes from the same district can win. Momentarily forgetting the danger, Katniss bursts out Peter's name. Katniss searches for and eventually finds Peter, camouflaged by a steam, looking like shit. <laughs> Sorry. Horrified by his severe injuries, she drags him to a cave where they can hide out. Peter, always the drama king, develops blood poisoning, prompting Katniss to impulsively kiss him, hoping to inspire a medical miracle or at least some sponsor gifts. Moments later, Katniss hears a noise outside and discovers a pot of soup sent by Hamish. She realizes he's rewarding her for the romance act with Peter. The next morning, Peter's infection worsens. Claudius Temple Smith announces a feast with essential items for each district. For District 12, it's medicine for Peter's injuries. Katniss tricks Peter into taking sleep syrup from Hamish, which knocks him out for a day so she can attend the feast. There, Foxface zips in first, nudging her backpack, throwing off Katniss's game plan. Katniss quickly grabs hers, marked with a 12, and bows. As she flees with Peter's medicine, Clove throws a knife at her. A second knife gashes her above the eye. Clove pins her down, taunting her about Rue's death and her own doom. Suddenly, Trash, the tribute from District 11, intervenes, demanding to know if Clove killed Rue. Despite Clove's frantic denials, Trash doesn't buy it and crushes her with a rock. Trash spares Katniss out of gratitude for her kindness to Rue, leaving her to scramble back to the cave with the precious medicine. Peter wakes up and Katniss gives him the medicine just before passing out herself. They remain in the caves for several days during a relentless rain. Their relationship deepens during this time. When the rain finally stops, Katniss leaves Peter to forge while she hunts. Upon her return, she discovers Peter has collected a small pile of poisonous berries, mistaking them for safe ones. They find Foxface dead nearby, realizing she ate the berries. With only Ketu left after he killed Trash, Katniss keeps some berries, planning to use them as a potential trick against him. As water sources dry up, they are forced to head to the lake near the cornucopia. At the lake, they find Ketu fleeing from capital mutations, human-like wolves, resembling dead tributes. The final confrontation unfolds atop the cornucopia. Ketu attempts to use Peter as leverage against Katniss, but she pierces his hand, causing him to fall to the muds below. His armor protects him from immediate death, but subjects him to torture. Severely wounded by the muds, Ketu is ultimately killed by Katniss with an arrow to the head. Despite defeating Keto, Katniss and Peter are shocked when they aren't declared victors immediately. Instead, the announcer dramatically reveals that only one can win. Refusing to kill each other, Katniss pulls out the poisonous berries, hoping the capital prefers two victors over none. Just as they are about to eat them, the announcer panics and declares both of them winners. Back at the training center, Katniss enjoys a solo vacation in her room. Finally released, Hamish warns her that the capital sees her berry stunt as a rebellion. Katniss now has to convince everyone it was all about her epic love for Peter, or her family might end up on President Snow's naughty list. During their final interview, Katniss is reunited with Peter, who's parading a new prosthetic leg and looking like a cyborg superhero. Afterwards, Hamish congratulates Katniss on her killer performance, but Peter's confused and hurt when he warns their romance was, a, was partly a strategy. Katniss explains everything and Peter, feeling more betrayed than a Bachelor contestant, is not pleased. Katniss' emotions are all over the place and she tries to figure out what was real and what was just for the show. As they return to District 12, they hold hands one last time for the cameras, putting on their best happy couple faces. The crowd cheers, but both are left wondering what the future holds for them. More drama, more romance, zero berries, or a president's no visit. What should I do next?